Talia, in trying to understand our own being, our own mental states, the issue of intentionality, did that person do it on purpose, is yes. very important to our lives. Yeah. How can we begin to understand that process? Um, well, I think you have to separate out uh, the fact that somebody did something purposefully and the feeling of doing it intentionally. I think there's actually two separate things. Because the feeling of doing something intentionally is not a good guide for whether we actually did something purposefully. Uh, so it seems like the feeling is a first-person internal thing, but the question of did they do it purposefully may be a third person, something that is an objective thing. It's objective, that's right. Um, I clearly, you know, I'm thirsty, I go for a glass of water, that was purposeful action. The feeling of me being a conscious agent, intending, that can be moved around, that feeling can be moved mm. around, and so it's not a great, a great guide for whether or not we really did something purposefully. So how can you say that? I mean, it's, they seem like the same thing. They do, but you can, you can split them apart experimentally. You can show that I can manipulate the feeling, your feeling of will, your feeling that you're doing things intentionally. And so it shouldn't be a good guide as to whether or not you really were doing it purposely. So even though what I'm doing is the same thing and a third person would see me doing the same thing, in one case I would feel like I'm doing, in another case I wouldn't? That's right. That's right. So. We can push it around. We can, as long as we m mimic... Uh, how the brain sort of codes an intentional action, we can make you think that you intended to do something you didn't actually do, and, and we can show that you're doing something and you don't feel intention, but actually you were doing it intentionally. Okay, so how, how, would, that, how would that work? I mean, what, what's an example of how you can switch our normal perceptions like that? Well, in one example, actually, we used hypnosis, and... Um, we use hypnosis to embed a post-hypnotic suggestion to do a particular behavior. And what's interesting about post-hypnotic suggestions is that they will, be, you can create a, make people do something without them feeling that they did it intentionally. They mm -hmm. become almost like observers of their own behavior. Mm -hmm. So they're doing the thing purposefully. Um, so I, for example, I can um, hypnotize you, give you uh, a post-hypnotic suggestion to go over to that chair and pick up a book and start reading from page 63. Mm. Um, tell you, you won't remember why you're doing this, wake you up, uh, give you a cue, you go over there, you start reading from page 63. I say, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, what, do, what do I say? You say, you actually usually say, I don't know. And I say, well, how intentional did that feel? And you say, it didn't feel intentional at all. Oh. You feel like a puppet on a string, but you actually did it very purposefully. And somebody looking at me from a distance. Would absolutely say, you intended to go right, over right. there. It was an agentic action, but it certainly didn't feel like that to you right. at the time. So that's remarkable. Uh, how about you do the, the, the converse of that? Exactly. You can create the feeling of intention without any corresponding action. The way you do it is uh, by ma manipulating three things, priority, consistency, and exclusivity. Priority means um, you have the thought before you see yourself doing the action. Um, consistency means that thought was consistent with the action. And exclusivity means you think you're the only possible cause of that action. If you can mimic those things, you can cause people to feel intentions when they shouldn't. This is the same reason um, if you wish someone ill, that's a thought, then you see them actually uh, you know, have an accident or something. That's a consistent action. It's not your own action, but it's a right. consistent action. You're the only one you think wish them ill, then they... You feel guilty. You feel guilty. That's yeah. why. Yeah. right? You shouldn't logically feel guilty for right. what, someone, what happened to somebody else right. um, when you didn't do it. Right. But you do. Right. So in both cases, you're, you're, you're teasing apart this concept of intentionality from literally what we do. That's right. That's right. So what are the implications of that? Well, the implications are if you can push around this feeling of will and dissociate it entirely from action, then it shouldn't be used really in a court of law as an indicator of our, why we did something. Our intent. Our intent. Yeah. But it is our behavior, but it may not be our intent. Exactly.